without teaching civil discourse and civility, where the hell are you going to learn it? Right. And if you don't learn it, if, if you don't know that it exists, if no one tells you how to be the sovereign power, you ain't. You've given it up. Yeah. And if no one tells you how to actually have civility in your public discourse, then you don't have it. Right. And you're not going to know it when you stumble on it in the dark. And that's what happened to women who had been really hurt and harmed in the real world by um, a millennia of rotten second-class second citizenship to finally feel that they were going to, they, they couldn't take any more of right. it, right? And the press, the press said, you want to heal that wound? Go down that corridor and open up that door and you'll see the way to heal the wound. And they went down the corridor, opened the door, and committed character assassination. And that's what it was. If the guy's not there when you make the accusation, it's a character assassination, because in our system, the guy's there and you can duke it out, okay? And you call it anything else, and what you're doing is saying that there we have come upon a crime that is so terrible that it's worth throwing out due process of law. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, there's no such crime that has ever been discovered, including serial killing and the Holocaust, that is so terrible that we have to chuck due process of law, which has taken all of the history of mankind to reach yeah. habeas corpus and th- that character assassination you don't give that up i don't care take a number get in line and and dustin hoffman said this easily and was instead of being supported he was made fun of when john oliver attacked him one night for some behavior, Dustin said, and I don't know Dustin, but I sure agreed with this. Never met Dustin? No, I've met him. I've met him, but I don't know him. Sure, sure, sure. I said, uh, he said, John, we were trained to this behavior. And John Oliver said, oh, how pathetic, Dustin. Well, how pathetic, John. We were all trained to this behavior. We were trained to disrespect girls. We were trained to the nth degree. And you can only uh, think that the alternative of respecting girls and treating them with the respect they inherently deserve was a a cultural phenomena supported by the culture only if you're deaf, dumb, and blind, because that's not true. If you treated girls to the respect they deserved, you were called a geek and a nerd, and you were culturally scorned by boys and girls. And if you're a girl, when you're 14, 15, 16 years old, there is no class, there's no book, there's no mentor to tell you how to find the six different definitions of the word no you got to do that all by yourself. And those are known as puberty rights. And they're different in every culture, from the Amish to the French court of Louis the Sun King. In the French court, men showed their ankle as they walked because it was a sex object. Okay? It's a very awkward walk. Mm-hmm. Try it. <laughs> and <laughs> what? and uh, in the Amish con- uh, country you are encouraged to have sex before marriage because you've got to get to know if you're compatible. And the parents make a show of, well, we're going to bed now. And they go to bed and they expect the kids to have sex. Now, here's the fact. Men and women will flirt and have babies. They will do this. They will flirt and screw and have babies. 
regardless of marriage or not marriage, regardless of consequence, these are evolutionary compulsions and it will, they will be accomplished. So get behind it, pal. Get behind it now. It's just a question of style. And in general, there is one idea. In the San Francisco earthquake with the fires breaking out and all of the buildings falling down, when you're running to the river, that's not the time to stop and say, it's the mayor's fault. That's not the time. You do that later. And so everything that was done in the last year by the Me Too movement had to overlook some felony they were committing in order to secure the felony committed against them. And that has to be taken seriously. And mm -hmm. I was told at one point, you know what the real feeling about you, Richard, is in Hollywood? No, what is it? Richard just doesn't get it. Well, I would say, not only does Richard get it, Richard gets it better than most, and I will discuss this anywhere, anytime, any place. But understand that I think that women reduce their value to themselves by reducing themselves to this, this argument. They're more than women who have been mistreated by men. They're American women with an ethical and historical relationship to the values of the Enlightenment. And they have been deeply ingrained within the DNA of their system to engage with one another on a, on a hugely fair basis. And that fairness was not culturally supported by any nation in the world who thought that education of any kind was a crime and the, the powers that were would have come over and happily strangled us in our beds before letting these values out. We let them out and we became the most popular and most respected country in the history of the world and we did not make a gender exclusion. Now, in fact, we did make gender exclusions, pro-men, you know, as we always have done, but those are the kind of invisible sins we don't even recognize. They're so vast. They're so outrageous. But when asked, that's when you say, Mr. Rumsfeld, hello, remember me? I say, you're more than your accusation. You're far more than that, and I am too. And what wasn't discussed at that time, last November, was the person who laid a, an accusation against me, it never occurred to her to pick up the phone and call me and say, Richard, did you know how badly you hurt me? And I would have said, what? I did not, did I? And she could have pressed the point and made it clear and I would have burst into tears and felt like a slug. And that's the appropriate way to have done it. Not about Harvey Weinstein, I'm not talking about felonies, I'm talking about mixing felonies with misdemeanors, mortal and venial sins. You put us in the same walk. Right. And that's inherently wrong. You haven't even figured out what the crime was, and you're putting me in with a rapist. And you have seen an effect as far as work because of this, as where it's on, like you said, character, maybe assassination you feel that it could be, or it was something that affected you immediately because, because that phone call didn't happen. The conversations didn't happen. There right. was no, so do you. I feel that on the day, yeah. as a matter of fact, I was uh, the first. I think the first accusation was aired on November 7th. I was scheduled on November 14th to make a speech at the Smithsonian Institution. And I got a call on November 10th, canceling. Mm. And, I, and they made it, made it clear that it had nothing whatsoever to do with the story in the papers at that moment that I had been guilty of right. this and this. And she called me, finally, and I said, you can call it anything you want, 
but know that the world will see it as an, uh, an institution that has no political bias, blinking in the face of an accusation that is being heard as a verdict. <laughs>